Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord this morning. Welcome to Rockstone Church. And uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started with prayer today. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, Lord God. Father, first of all, blessing you for your, your, your blessings, your many blessings, Lord God. Father, we thank you for who you are, Lord God. Thank you for protecting us and keeping us from seen and unseen dangers, Lord God. Father, Lord God, we just ask, Lord God, today, Lord God, that, Father, Lord God, that you would come down, Lord God, in this service, Lord God. Father, that you would change hearts, Lord God, and minds, Lord God. Father, those that have been struggling, Lord God, with their walk, Lord God, help them to, to walk, Lord God. Those, Lord God, who have been troubled, Lord God, and have been going through trials, Lord God, give them the strength, Lord God, to continue through the trials, Lord God. Father, we're asking, Lord God, Father, that you would protect the man of God Lord, today, Lord God, as he delivers your word, Lord God. Ask, Lord God, that you look Lord, upon us and smile upon us, Lord God. And we ask, Lord God, that today, Lord God, that there be a refreshing and renewedness, Lord God, of life, Lord God, in your precious name, Jesus. We ask and we pray, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
for today and thought about giving up and felt like there was no life in you. Listen, God is your life. God is going to leave you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's a way maker. He's a mind regulator. He's a heavy old God is keeping you alive. Even when you feel like you're He's not going to let you know when to tell. He's
you in those cars, honk your horns real quick. Let somebody hear you. If you got hands, come on, let's clap real quick. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, if you're right there watching us on Facebook, come on, clap your hands like this. You're on our old school church with a new school plan. But at the end of the day, we're serving the same God. The same God that delivered the children of Israel. The same God that died on the cross in the form of Jesus Christ. The same God that by faith we can be saved because of His grace. The same God that's preparing a place for us. And where He is, we may be also. The same God that's coming back for us just like He said He would. This is the same God that healed your body, saved your soul, who made you whole, got you back up, and gave you life. Come on. We want to clap our hands. Isn't it beautiful? Come on. Isn't it beautiful? It's time for fellowship in the parking lot. Fellowship at your house. Fellowship wherever you may be watching. And I want you to tell as many people as you can in a safe manner. Isn't he beautiful? Come on, let's exclaim it. Let's tell somebody. Let's remind them. Come on, say, isn't he beautiful? Come on, isn't he beautiful? Isn't the Lord beautiful? Come on. And you can do it while you're clapping your hands. Come on. Come on, isn't he beautiful? Come on, you finna tell them, yeah, come on, go around your house. You don't have nobody to tell, tell yourself. Isn't it beautiful? Remind yourself of the goodness of Jesus. All that he's done, all the ways he's made, all the promises kept. Save your soul. Come on, made your whole. Gave you a brand new life. Took you away from fear and strife. Isn't he beautiful? Isn't he beautiful? Come on. Isn't he beautiful? Isn't he beautiful? Come on. There's some songs that the words say it all. There's nothing I can say that's any better than just asking the question, isn't he beautiful? And it's a rhetorical question. Because of course the Lord is beautiful. So we say, Lord, be exalted and be lifted high. <laughs> King of ages, hallelujah, come on, be glorified. Come on, somebody right now, take time to magnify the Lord. This is a good place right here. We fellowship with each other. Come on, lift those hands to what's heaven. Come on, magnify the Lord. Let's tell him how wonderful he is. Sometimes you say, Lord, I don't know what to say when I pray. I don't know what to say when I worship. I got some good words. Say, Lord, you're beautiful. You're all together lovely, hallelujah. Lord, when I think of your goodness and all you've done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. If you don't have anything else to say, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I give you the highest praise. Thank you, Jesus. You're lovely. You're wonderful. You're kind. You're gracious. You're a healer, a deliverer, a way maker, a promise keeper. Come on, go have it. And now you can go right there and add what he is to you. Listen, he's done something for each of us, but he's done something unique for every one of us. Amen. What has he been to you? Somebody say he's a keeper because I would have lost my mind. I wonder how many people out there right now say the only reason you're in your right mind right now is because of God. I, I think I got a few folks. The only reason right now, Pastor, I've got any peace with everything that I'm going through is because of God. He's a mind regulator. I remember when I was young, amen, the missionaries and the deacons used to say he's a mind regulator. When being a boy, I didn't know what they were talking about, but the older I get, with as much as I go through, and you go through, and we go through, he's a mind regulator. Keeps me from losing my jaw. Hallelujah. He is my healer. And even in the midst of everything going on, he's still healing and doing something great. How many, how many people know that the Lord is beautiful? Come on, I can't hear you too well. Come on. The Lord is beautiful. When I say the Lord is beautiful, you ought to say, yes, he is. The Lord is beautiful. The Lord is beautiful. The Lord is beautiful. One more time, the Lord is beautiful. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. We bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Just in case 
you didn't know who we were talking about, we want to make it very clear that we're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who says, I am the everlasting Father. His name shall be Wonderful Counselor. Yes, Him. He's the mighty God. He's the everlasting Father. And He's the Prince of Peace. The God we serve is God. God alone. God by Himself. God sovereign. God beautiful. And we love Him today. We appreciate Him being in our lives. Hallelujah. Of all the people that I know and can be known of, I'm so glad to know Jesus for myself. Anybody here glad to know Jesus for yourself? Hallelujah. I'm so glad to know Jesus. The free pardoning of my sins. When I needed him, he was always there. Still standing by my side. When I left, he didn't walk away. So that's why I can exalt him. Hallelujah. I can lift him high. I can give him glory. And I tell you today, no matter what you're facing in this parking lot, what you're facing here, even though we're dealing with an uptick of COVID-19, thought it was going away, but you know how it is in America, we're a little bit, you know, stubborn with how we're going to act. So here it is still, because we won't do what we're supposed to do. But even in the midst of us being the problem, he's still beautiful. In the midst of us being hard-headed, he's still gracious. He still heals, hallelujah, in spite of us. And that's why I love him, because he first loved me. And he does it in spite of me. It's one thing for somebody to love you because of you. Because of your inner man. Because of how beautiful you are. But it's quite another for somebody to love you in spite of yourself. So Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Thank you for being here with us today. Don't forget to do three things for us. If you have not already done so. Please do what? Share. And what? Like. And tag. Somebody say share like and tag and amen make sure in the parking lot we've done it first of all and then second of all make sure you like and you share let somebody know that you're enjoying your worship with us that you're enjoying your time with us that we're doing nothing but magnifying the lord we're not meddling we're not getting in your business and we don't have time to fight and complain we don't have time to make points we're simply here as paul says to preach jesus christ and him crucified to preach the message of the cross the greatest sacrificial love act in the history of mankind. The very act that changed the, the trajectory of the world, of mankind. You and I have a right to eternal life right now because of what he's done. So thank you for being here with us today. We salute you, appreciate you, and thank you, amen, for being here. We're getting ready now to worship the Lord with our tithe and offering. Let's give God some praise for that. Amen. Thank God. And we appreciate you. Amen. We've been, uh, it's been three weeks now. We have been started the Lord place in our heart. Amen. That he's ready to do some things for Rockstone. Uh, we're ready to go forward and, and do some other things, uh, whether it be moving, whether it be renovating, some, some things we've got to do to expand the ministry. The Lord placed into our spirit those that would be, amen, seed givers, seed sowers. Uh, and we've asked for a thousand dollar seed. And don't you know, every week we've had someone come up and say, we've had people come up. Amen. Multiple people come up and say, I'm, I'm going to be with you. I'm with you in it now. Oh, I got Saints of Rockstone and the partners out there and members uh, and visitors and friends. I want to let you know something. I want to make it very clear. And we said from the beginning, we don't expect you to go into anything, your savings. We don't expect you to go into uh, your, 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 your mortgage payment, rather. Uh, you know, you might want to, you know, savings is one thing, but, you know, you got to realize that some things are worth sowing seed for but we don't want you to touch money that you need we're not asking for car notes we're not asking for something uh, that will be uh, put you out next week but we're asking for somebody who's willing so i'm willing to do it i want to do it i, I and, and i tell you right now if you want to just ask the lord lord put a thousand dollars in my hand so that i can bless the people of god i'm telling you god will make a way i'm not telling you what i'm thinking i'm not just telling what somebody told me i'm telling you what i know personally that god will open up a door and make a way Amen. And when he does it, sow your seed. So today you say, I don't have it, but I dare you to want it. Amen. If anybody wants to give, tell the Lord right now, Lord, I want to give. Amen. Make that pledge. Hallelujah. And the Lord will make a way. I, amen. I got a testimony this week. Amen. Somebody was telling me I wanted to give it, Pastor. Amen. But I didn't have it. Lord knows I didn't have it. And I told him before, it's not about having, it's about wanting to give. Because the Bible said he'll give seed to the soul. So he knows you're going to sow, he'll give you the seed. And so they called, amen, they were so excited. Said, did you get it? Did you get it? What, get what? Did you get the $1,000? Amen, the Lord opened up a door. 
amen money that i didn't know was even coming money amen that was expanded i was supposed to get one amount but guess what they amen quadrupled it amen hallelujah it was more than what i even expected but guess what she made the pledge she amen made good on her promise and guess what every cent and every dollar nothing's going to anything else nothing's going to me everything's going towards the upbuilding of the kingdom of god so you can trust and depend amen that on this fact that we are going to do what we say we're going to do so amen those thousand dollar seats so come on i need to hear from you i need you to amen connect i need to see it in that cash app i need you to see the checks coming i need somebody to place it in my hand and we need to go forward because i'm telling you what god's going to do something great and he said you have not because you asked not so we've asked the lord to do something miraculous do something great we're going to amen we can't raise enough for what we need but god's going to open up some doors he's going to touch some hearts he's going to bless us with that a wonderful million dollar gift i believe it and trust but he said before you amen expect anybody else to sow a seed in your ministry you've got to be willing to sow a seed yourself so we've sown seeds and rockstone we've sown seeds so amen be a part of that we love you we appreciate you amen thank you so very much already in advance god's going to do it all right so as you go amen you know we can give online tithe offering and seed through our cash app dollar sign rock stone church dollar sign rock stone church amen dollar sign rock stone church or you can go to the website www.rockstonechurch.org www.rockstonechurch.org and there's a the donations page you can click on it it gives you the method of giving it's a text number that you can put in your phone and text anytime you want to give after you set it up the first time you just text the amount hit send that easy and it goes right to where it needs to go or you can give through tithe ly tithe ly amen and it allows you to give consistently you can set it up you can do direct deposit however you want to give amen it's easy for you to do it it's so simple to do it and if you say well pastor i just want to mail in the check you know that's all right with us amen we have no problems no issues no hang-ups send it to 781 main street stone mountain georgia 30083 again 781 Main Street, Stone Mountain, Georgia, 30083. And the one thing I can tell you, you can't be God-given, no matter how you try. Amen. The point is, what kind of ground are you giving to? That's the only issue. If you got seed and good ground and the rain is coming, it will produce a harvest. So, amen, God will put seed in your hand. And I'm telling you, you can trust that this is good ground. And the Lord, amen, hallelujah, will open up. He will make ways. The harvest will be yours. All right. So we thank you for that. We appreciate you. Amen. Again, thank you for being here today. Uh, we're going to give our announcements real quick uh, as as we go forward. We are thankful today to be here. Uh, we want to say, do we have any birthdays in the month of July? Any birthdays in the month of July? Yeah, we got some. July is a hot month. Amen. We got plenty of birthdays in July. So we appreciate all the birthdays and all the celebrations. I want to say, amen, happy birthday to each of you. Uh, if anybody, is anybody's today? Anybody's today? Anybody's today? Amen. I know that on, on tomorrow, we wish uh, Mother Kennedy a happy birthday on tomorrow. Amen. It's tomorrow, so she doesn't get a birthday song today, but we want to acknowledge that her birthday is on tomorrow. So we thank God that, amen, my mother is still here, still doing well in the land of living, supporting Rockstone, still dancing, still shouting, still, amen, teaching the word of God. So we're so appreciative of her, amen, being with us and for all of the J July birthdays. Anybody born again, amen, have a spiritual birthday in the month of July. Anybody spiritual birthday in the month of July? Amen. Oh, okay. I guess everybody got saved before then or after then. So if you're here and you've not been born again, make July your spiritual birthday, which is the greatest birthday of all because it will last forever. It's eternal life. Anybody have a wedding anniversary in July? Wedding anniversary in July. Amen. We got, I know we have one mother and uh, Deacon Kennedy, uh, my mom and dad celebrated 50 years last week. So we celebrate that. But anybody else have an anniversary? Happy anniversary. So on behalf of myself, Lady Kennedy, and the entire Rockstone family, happy birthday, happy anniversary, and happy spiritual birthday. And we love you. And if nobody else says we love you, no one else hugs you, we're here to give you a virtual hug, amen, as well as a spiritual hug. And we love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. Our announcements are as follows. Monday night, tomorrow. Tomorrow night is our, uh, our uh, 645, 7 o'clock. You can jump on a Zoom. We're going to have our virtual uh, small classrooms or small workshops, our virtual discipleship classes on Monday. So please be there on zoom you can get the page through our site uh, we'll send the information the, the message it to you if you want it you don't have the information you simply comment let us know we'll send it to you but go to our page our facebook page it will be out there for you uh to let you know how to link in so it's going to be tomorrow amen we have it at seven o'clock sharp so we people start getting on 6 45 and we'll admit you in at seven o'clock 
so that you be ready for your class. Amen. It's only an hour, but it's an hour of teaching, an hour of power, an hour of, of, of wonderful information and fun. The teachers make it so fun and so uh, informative that you're going to love it. So be there tomorrow at 7. Uh, on this week, we do have uh, the way the cross, amen, is in convocation. The convocation, it begins tonight. So I want you to be in prayer. The National Gaylord, amen, the National Harbor Gaylord. Uh, in Maryland, the uh, Way of the Cross is celebrating uh, their convocation. You know, last year we had it only virtual. This year we're trying to, amen, do it in person again. So pray for us, even as we know the uptick is there, that we be safe and we be sound, but yet have a wonderful, sanctified time. So be in prayer for the Way of the Cross that God would protect, God's blood would cover, and He would have His way. Amen. So be there. Amen. Check out WOTCC.net for all the information. WOTCC.net. Information on the Way of the Cross. Uh, convocation that is beginning tonight in Maryland through uh, Friday night All Saints Day uh, it will end the convocation so be there uh, with us and we thank God for you amen on Wednesday amen we're not gonna have Bible study as usual uh, but we'll just have a, a small time for just uh, you know check out the site we might have a, a few songs a few prayer uh, you know uh, opportunities but we want to amen whenever the way the cross has uh, our organizational meetings we try to uh, not have full Bible classes or full Bible studies and so we're going to uh, you know, have that again this week. Still tune in to see what we're going to do. It'll be something wonderful and special. But we do try to honor that and give full attention uh, to the way to cross this week. Uh, but Friday, now listen, even though we're having complication, it's no need that we can't come together five minutes to pray. Amen. Prayer is always appropriate. Somebody say prayer is always appropriate. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Prayer is always appropriate. Amen. And we're going to still pray at 7 o'clock on Friday. Uh, so we're going to have a time for prayer. So just tune in. Even if it's just a few minutes, just to connect together. I, I can't think of a reason to stop praying. Hallelujah. And so I'm hoping and praying that everybody out there is being a part of the Give Me Five program. Give Me Five program is taking five minutes that's uninterrupted. Amen. With God. Amen. With no one else bothering you. Don't think about anything else. You find yourself thinking about something else. Shut it down. Amen. Hallelujah. Watch what's going on in your mind. Floating in and out. That's your time for God. God knows you're going to be there. Hey, amen. He's going to have something special ready for you. And you'll be surprised how to just build you up. How to be just starting with those five minutes. That's not the end game, but it is a starting point. All right. So the Give Me Five program, something easy for you to catch on to. We want to get some t-shirts. We want to get some information to see who's a part of the Give Me Five. I pray everybody here is a part of the Give Me Five program. And I, part, and I pray that you are our partners and friends out there. Members are a part of it as well. It will do you good. All right. So those are all our announcements. And don't forget. Back to school next Sunday. Next Sunday, I, I, I don't want to say it to make anybody upset, but guess what? School is starting again. It's back to school time. Hallelujah! Now we're really praying because, regardless of what people think or say or how America's acting, there's something still called the COVID-19 or coronavirus still in the land, and our our children are going back to school. And right now, there's no vaccine that I know of for those under 12. So we've got some issues, don't we? We've got some concerns. And so right now, instead of me crying about it and worrying about it, I'm going to pray about it because we need God's hands on our children. And so next week, we've got back to school. We're going to have back to school prayer. We've got some back to school supplies. Uh, we're going to bless our children. And we're going to bless the administrators, teachers, because not only do children have to go back, but teachers and administrators are going back as well. So we're going to pray for you. And we're going to ask God to bless you, watch over you, because at the end of the day, we thank God for vaccines, we thank God for medical science, we thank God for, amen, all that men can do. But at the end of the day, there's some things only God can do. And we must be covered by the blood of Jesus so that the, amen, the sickness in the land will not come upon us. And so we've got to pray. we got to be smart. Amen. we got to be safe. we got to be sanctified. we got to do what we can. Amen. Wear that mask. Hallelujah. Stop fighting against the system. Do what you can do. Be respectful of others and their space. Amen. If you don't feel well, stay at home. All these things we can do. But guess what? After it's all said and done, amen, that may not be enough. That's when we ask God. God, step in. After we make the first step, he'll make two. So we're going to pray for your children. We're going to pray for our administrators. Then we're going to pray for the church. And Rockstone, we are praying for you. Even as, amen, this is going on. We don't know which way it's going or turning, but we do know God. And that God has already seen the future. So we hold on to his unchanging hand. And he'll take us all the way through. Do I have a witness that believes God? Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. We trust God and we believe God. Amen. And we know he's going to do it. He's done it thus far. And he that hath begun the good work is faithful to complete it. So we thank you. Amen, everybody. So we're going to pray for this offering. And after that, we're going to have the final selection.
from our praise team and we're going to bring you what thus saith the lord father god in jesus name thank you for every gift and every giver we trust you believe you and then we honor you god you are like nobody else and so god today we give you the seed we give you our tithe and our offering with confidence knowing that you'll do what you say for you are a man of your word so god you are beautiful you are loving and you're kind you've given us the keys how to the financial breakthrough and we'll follow your plan and follow your word so god give seed to the sower Open up doors and make ways, God. We need financial increase. Even though inflation is even high, is in the land. Even though prices are rising, we know that you're able to keep us. And amen, to be our resource. So we thank you in advance. And we do what you say. Because if we do what you say, we're going to get your result. And Father, we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank God for everybody. We love you. Amen. And we appreciate you. Hallelujah. You keep the prayers coming. We need them so very much. Amen. We got one more selection. After that, we are going to bring you. What thus saith the Lord. Oh, mm -hmm. 
you never lost a battle. I'm so grateful, Jesus. Never lost a battle. Come on, every hand lift you right now. Come on, give God a worship right now. If you know he's never lost a battle, come on, give God that praise he's doing right now. Hallelujah, Jesus.
lost a battle. Never. Never. Ever. <laughs> and here's the good news. He's just not on a good streak. He's just not, he had me get lucky. God can't lose. He's God. He's created every game. He knows every answer. He can defeat any enemy. As a matter of fact, it's not even close. It's not even a battle, really. God is victorious. And the Bible says that he causes us to triumph. So if you want victory in your life, if you want good victory, you want all-time victory, the Lord says, stay in me. Trust me. Because I've never lost a battle. I don't know how to lose. Because I've never done it and never will. So I want you to know that, hallelujah, he can do all things. He can do anything. But there is something that even God can't do. What can't God do, preacher? God cannot fail. God cannot lose. He's always on top. Let us turn to the word of God today. We go directly in. We appreciate you being here again. If you have not done so, this is the most important part of the service. Where the Lord is going to open up heaven to speak to his people. So share and tag. You can like it or not. That's okay. I mean, we'd love for you to like it. But when it comes to the word, we just want you to share it. Tag somebody. Amen. Because they need to hear what thus saith the Lord. For the Bible declares that the heavens and the earth shall pass away. But the words of the Lord shall stand forever. We're going to finish up, hopefully, uh, with our series. And if we don't, that's all right, too. We'll finish it up next time. We don't rush God's plan, His word. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. We're going to deal with that again this week, starting with verse number 6. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, beginning with verse number 6. Yeah, we thank God for you being here. Pray for us as we deliver the word. For the enemy doesn't want the word to go forward. How many people know that the word is a light? The word is a lamp. It will order our steps. And we need the word in our lives. First Corinthians chapter number two, beginning with verse six, the Bible says this. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Yes, yes. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Today, thanks to God, we're going to continue in our series on the framework for fundamental transformation. The framework for fundamental transformation. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you today just for the ability to be here. To speak your word. Now, God, I do something very important. Is I, I move out of the way. I decrease my mindset and my thought processes. They all must decrease that you might increase. Have your way, God. Teach us. Show us. God, right now, I become a vessel 
emptied out for my own self so that you can fill me and use me for your glory. Speak, Lord, for thy servant does hear. So, God, my mind is open. My heart is ready. Now, God, we need you to deliver your word because only you can draw, Father. I can't draw. My eloquence doesn't draw. But it's the power of the proclamation of the message of Jesus Christ. It's something we can't understand. We can't put our finger on. Men have been trying to figure it out for centuries. They don't know how, why, but it is the power of God. So you have decided through the foolishness of the preaching of the gospel to save mankind. So God, we're here today, this July, 2021, still preaching and teaching this gospel. For it is this gospel that will save. So God, use us for your glory. Set free, deliver, save, Lord. Let someone hear this word and say, what must I do to be saved? It's about transformation, God, not about thought process only, but that the thought process will make a change in our physical lives and our actions and our attitudes, God. We're not here just to be a think tank, but we're here to change. So, God, we thank you already. Hallelujah. Let your word go forth. Let the enemy be horrified. Let it move out of our way. Yes, God. God, I pray right now. Hallelujah. That you do it. Don't let one word come back void. Yes, God. Send it right now, Lord. Yes, we thank you already. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We thank God for, again, everybody being here. So we go forward. For the last couple of weeks, we have been dealing with fundamental change, fundamental transformation. And we understand, we say fundamental transformation, we're dealing with your mind. Because change is not something that happens simply from the outside appearance. You can change your shirt, still be the same old nasty person that you are. You can change, put on white, but still be dirty. Hey, do I have a witness? You can change your shoes, shower, do all you want. Fundamental change must begin in your mind. Yes, and that's where we understand. You can tell when people really change. Hear me. When people really change, they do more than say, oh, I'm going to do something. Because talk is absolutely cheap. Talk is not even worth the penny that you pull out of your pocket. You talk, amen, you can give me a penny and we can make change. When you really change, yes. when it's really yes. fundamental, yes. it begins in your mind. The problem is, I don't have to, if I'm changing, I don't have to keep telling you I'm changing. You'll be able to see the change for yourself. And God, so many people go to say, God, if you do this, I'll never do that. God, if you perform this miracle, I'll do this. And we must understand that God knows your heart. God knows your intentions. God knows when you said it, if you meant to do it or not. So that's why God is looking at, when you have a repentant heart, God will not turn you away. It does not matter what you have done. When your heart says, Lord, I, I'm changing my mind. Yes, God. I'm changing my thoughts. I'm changing how I do it. When you get fundamental change, it must begin in your mind. That's why many of us are duped or deceived. Yes. We are upset and somehow fooled into thinking because somebody said they would change, that they actually changed. But yet, let me tell you something. Change does not happen simply because we want it to. If a person does not introduce themselves to something that will change them, some literature, some leading, some teaching, some information, something that even I, I learned in our lives that even when tragedy happens, doesn't mean we're going to change who we are. Today, you understand, you can't scare nobody into heaven. I remember they talked about the fire and brimstone. Y'all remember the fire and brimstone preaching? Yes. When well, you preach and preach and talk about hellfire. And boy, I know when I was a boy at work, I did not want to go to hell, still don't. It's warm out here now. I know I can't take much more. Yes. Amen. I would be out in Hades. But I found out as a pastor of 19 years now that you can't scare nobody into doing right. That's right. That's right. People don't have a conception of hell. They don't think about it, don't know about it, and many times don't care about it. If somebody's going to change, you can't scare them into change. You must teach them into change. You must give them not just any word, but the word of God. Yes, God. Because if change is going to happen fundamentally, it must happen as God gets into your spirit, man. And as God teaches you and changes you, if I'm being honest, something supernatural has to happen in your heart. Yes, God. You cannot come to church and just feel good, jump and shout a little bit, and feel good and go home and say you change. That's why David said, my, thy, thy word 
O Lord, have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Saints of God, let's be honest. We all have the can't help us. We all have sin that is lying at our door. Let's not fool ourselves. We all have thoughts and habits that we need to shake and get rid of, but it is a process. It takes time to get to where you need to go, and if you're still alive, you still should be growing. That's why, amen, you ought to be sinless. Sin less tomorrow than you did today, and sin less on Tuesday than Monday. It's a process. You won't get there overnight. That's why you've got to be perfect or mature. You've got to be growing in Christ. But one thing you understand that your growth is going to be stunted if you don't fundamentally change. And fundamental change always begins with repentance. Repentance means, Lord, what? I'm changing my mind. When I change my mind, I'm going to change my direction. Let me tell you something. If you have not changed your direction, you have not repented. I'm going to say that again. I might, not, I might not jump up and down today, but y'all come on with me. We're trying to get fundamental change. Because I recognize after people who jump up and down and the organ is playing, we go back to sinning on Monday. But the fact of the matter is we're living in times that you've got to get this because the enemy is raging. I mean, he's coming from every angle. He's all over the media. He's in our educational systems. Amen. Now I heard somebody say, which was good. The difference now is that, amen, even in the law, amen, it's being legal to go against the word of God. It is being legal for us to do things that the word of God says not so. We're getting laws that says disobey the word of God. So now when we teach the word of God, they're trying to make it illegal. Yes. So we don't have time to sit back and play church. That's right. That's right. We don't have time to sit back and clap our hands and jump and shout and not change. Yes. Yes. A song itself will not change you. Yes. You wanting to change by itself will not change you. It takes the word of God. It's a change agent. So as we come today, saints of God, repentance. If you don't change your direction, you haven't repented. You simply said, I'm sorry. You're sorry you got caught. Many of us are sorry that we did it the wrong way. I'm sorry, man, I should have messed with that woman because she wasn't going to tell on me. We should have, amen, I should have messed with that dude because he wasn't going to tell my wife. Or my husband or whoever it is whatever the situation is sometimes we go we said man we should have amen used that instead of this because they wouldn't have told this would have worked out and many times we go back and we try to do it again we say this time I'm gonna do it better and we look at other people's mistakes and instead of learning from them we try to learn to do it better more sneaky if you will we try to see if, if they would have made a right turn instead of a left turn here cops would have never caught them thanks to god it is time now for a change of mind yes. which means repentance yes, if you learn how amen, what repentance is you can save relationships you can save most of all your very own soul yes, you can say god i know that i messed up i know that i got issues but let me tell you something. If, amen, I'm going to make it clear. You cannot repent and walk the same way. You, that's an oxymoron. And that means you're saying something and you're doing the opposite. You cannot say, I repent. Lord, I'm changing. Lord, I'm at the altar. I'm crying. Say to God, can I be honest with you? Tears at the altar is great. But tears at the altar does not mean change. I'm going to say this real quick. Because you cried at the altar doesn't mean you change. You come to church, shout. Make up some kind of tongue. Yes, God. So I tell you, saints of God, you can't. I'm not going to tell anybody whether you do or don't have the Holy Ghost. For the Bible says, you shall know them yes, by their fruit. Yes, God. So you can make up a tongue all you want. You can jibber jabber. You can make up something. But can I tell you what? If you don't have the fruit of the Spirit, I don't have to, I'm not going to judge you. But guess what? Here's the key. I don't have a heaven for you. Yes. I don't have, I'm not St. Peter. We all talk about St. Peter having the keys. Well, we know St. Peter don't have no keys. Yes. The only one that you need to hear say well done is Jesus himself. Uh, uh, uh. But if St. Peter don't have keys, you know I don't have any. Yes, sir. So you got to make sure. Here's the thing. God, he said, I never sleep and I never slumber. No matter where we are, God is there. So saints of God, we're talking about a change. The fundamental framework for tra transformation must begin with the mind, the very foundation as you build this house. And saints of God, you'd be surprised if you actually repent. If you actually repent, you shouldn't even get baptized until you repent. All right. You shouldn't even go down in the water until you repent. Because if you have not changed your mind, yes, God. when you get baptized, all you're doing is taking a bath. 
When you get baptized, all you're doing is getting wet. But when you change your mind, what happens is you change from how you view it to how God sees it. Even with baptism. If you don't see baptism how God sees it, you'll look at it and say, well, what's the point of baptism? See, that's how I know that your mind hasn't changed yet. It's in the word of God, and he's telling you what baptism is, uh, the removal or remission of your sins, which is spiritual. And so it's a spiritual act that God said to do physically. But if you can't even understand why you're getting baptized, or you doubt it, or, or you're concerned about it, say, I don't think it takes all that. That lets me know that your mind still hasn't changed to see how God sees it. Oh, hear me, saints of God. We got to get out of our, our physical thinking, our mind. When I say our mind, get out of what we've been taught in school, what others have taught us, and get into the word of God. You must walk after the Spirit. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. This is where Paul is talking here to the Corinthian church. He says, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. We speak wisdom amongst those that are Mature, not the, not the wisdom of this age. In other words, we're not looking for folks that have a whole bunch of educational information and knowledge. It's good to give education, but you got to have wisdom that comes from God. We're talking to those. Paul lets us know, you, if you recall, as he goes through Corinthians, he talks about milk. He talks about meat. So he said here, now we're speaking to those who are mature, those that, that are getting somewhere, those who are learning something, those who are growing up in Christ. Amen. Saints of God, there must come a time that we are maturing in Christ or growing in Christ to where we hear his words and they have an effect. Let me ask you a question. When you come to church, does the word of God have an effect on your life? That where you actually hear it and you contemplate it, you put it in your heart, you go back and read it, and you say, I'm going to do what the word says. If it's not evoking change, then there's a problem. He says, we speak wisdom among those who mature, not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. Can I be honest with you? Those that are important to you right now in the world will not be important next week, if I, if I can just paraphrase it. In other words, amen, you got a president now, but after a few years, they won't be president no more. You got people that you think are philosophers who you're taking into, a, 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 you're, you're listening to what they're saying, but their philosophies will come and they will go. You got people now that are marching for one thing today, and don't you know they'll be marching for something else tomorrow. Somebody will tell you how to live today, and there'll be some other help, you know, self-help guru telling you what to do tomorrow. Hey man, you go to your doctor, they'll say eggs are good. And then you go back next year, and they say eggs have too much cholesterol. Then you go right back, and they say, no, we were mistaken. It's if you put the egg white and the egg yolk together, they work together, and you'll keep going back and no matter what they'll change if you look at the educational system amen they're learning amen one plus one still is two but they're trying to teach them how to get there differently things change saints of god amen the world is changing the laws are changing nothing stays exactly the same except for the word of god why is that important because the word of god is right it doesn't need to change don't change that which works the word of god is perfect it is infallible. It is inerrant. It is God speaking to man because God knows. See, God has seen this before. God has seen civil unrest before. God has seen pandemics before. God has seen marches before. Amen. There have been movements that have changed the world before. But while they changed the world, God is still the same. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Paul was preaching in a time and an age of great difficulty. A time and age where people didn't want to believe. Matter of fact, a time and age where churches were just being established. So there was a battle on his hands. So don't think this is the only difficult time man has ever seen. Life has always been difficult. Ever since, amen, our forefathers, our Adam and Eve, our, our mother, ever since they disobeyed, he said, the day that you eat of this tree, what? You shall surely die. He told men, thorns and thistles shall you bring forth. Even ladies, they said there's going to be problems and pain and childbearing. So we've always had struggle because sin is death. So the wages of sin is death. So we've been going through death pains from the beginning. Uh -huh. The only way you get out of death pains is for you to understand that Jesus said, I am come that you might have life. I've come that you can have it in abundance, but you're still on this earth going to have problems. Yeah. He said, you're going to still suffer persecutions. But he said, I'm going to bring you out of all of them. So we look at it, amen. We look at man and where man is. He says here, amen, they, they, well, those that are just listening to today, I'm telling you, there will be a change tomorrow. I'm seeing people right now, even politically, those who are on board with the president, now everybody's looking towards the next election. And some are backing up saying, oh, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? You better be careful who is your support group. 
Because they will change their minds on you in the middle. Anybody have folk change up on you in the middle? They told you I'll support you. I'll be there. Sat at the altar. Lied to you. Said I'll never do anything against you. Amen. But time will always tell. That's why I'm telling people. If you really want to know if somebody's on your side, let time tell. Uh, don't let look say, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to let time tell. Because when I need you the most, either you're going to be there or you're not. And I'm going to tell somebody here today, you can always count on Jesus. He'll be there even when you're not there. Even when you walk away, he'll stand right by your side. He said, now look at this. He said, uh, those are coming. He said, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Here's what he's saying. He said, but we're preaching now that the word of God, which is a mystery. Now, mystery doesn't mean something you can't find out. It doesn't mean something that you won't know. It just means something that was hidden from you until God revealed it. So what he's saying is we have this message of the gospel, but it's on a layer to where if you don't want to get it, if you don't want to receive it, that's why so many people come to church and say, I don't get it. I don't understand it because you never even, even opened up your heart to see. You never even tried to see what God was saying. But Paul said, we're preaching to you uh, the mysteries of God. Amen. This is information where they did not know, remember, until Jesus Christ. We didn't know how man would be saved for eternity. Before Christ, they didn't understand the power of the cross. He said, how do I know? He said, because guess what? If the rulers of this age would have known who Jesus Christ was, if they would have known the mystery, the layers of the gospel, and how God intended to save man by another perfect man, if they would have gone back and read the script. You cannot know the mysteries of God if you don't go back and read the word. Word of God. See, if they would have known scripture, they would have seen the prophecies come to pass. Hallelujah. Saints of God, I'm telling you today, you can't just come to church on Sunday, hallelujah, and think you can understand the mysteries of God. Because if, as a matter of fact, when I talk to you on Sunday, if you don't know anything about the word of God, it's going to go over your head and you're going to look and say, Pastor, I just don't get it. Well, you don't get it because you're not getting to the layers of the myth. God's word requires that you read it. Uh, that sounds fundamental, doesn't it? But we deal with fundamental transformation. God's word requires that you read it. You can't get it, amen, by osmosis. You can't fall asleep on it every night. You can't just let it play. I know some of you do that thing, but pastor, I'm going to let it play while I sleep at night. Oh, uh, amen. God, and yeah, you'll get some of the words, but you got to be, con look at somebody say, you got to be conscious. God's word is not trying to get you from the back. He's not trying to trick you into being saved. He's not trying to. Some of y'all, I know you say, while your husband's asleep, I'm going to play the word of God in his ear. It's going to get him. And while your wife is asleep, I'm going to play the word. And I see y'all there with your little recorders, and they sleep, and you sit right there. And you, amen. There's one thing for you to be praying over them. There's another thing for you to be pleading God for them. But you can't trick nobody into learning the word of God. It's got to be a con. The Bible says, whosoever will. You got to have a will. Amen. And God said, if you got a will, I will make a way. Hallelujah. Do I have a witness here? Say, if you got a will, God will make a way. Hallelujah. And so it's got to be a conscious decision for you to know and read the word of God. It comes in layer. Paul said, we preach the gospel, which is a mystery. It means it comes in a layer. You got to want to get it. He said, and this is the what that men don't understand or don't know. Because if they had known what the word says, they would not have done what? They would not have killed the king of glory. In other words, if men would have understood who Jesus Christ really was, they would not have defeated him or killed him or crucified him. Amen. They would not have done what they did. But guess what? I'm so glad. Aren't you so glad that they didn't know what they really were doing? Aren't you so glad that they thought they were getting rid of somebody, but all they did was set my soul free? Because the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there would be what? No remission of sins. If they really knew the word of God, they wouldn't have touched him. But I'm so glad that God had another plan. And that, that's why he says, but let me tell you something that is written. He said, eyes has not seen and the ears have not heard. Neither has a man entered into the hearts of men. The things which God has prepared for them that love him. I, I want you to know, saints of God, amen, when you talk about eyes, amen, our eyes provide us with much of the information that we use to make judgments. Do you hear what I'm saying? You guys pretty much go by what you see. Amen. You look at, amen, you look outside, you say, oh, it seems like it's sunny. I'm not going to use an umbrella. You look over here and say, amen, they look good, so I think I might talk to them. You go and you say, oh, how many of you are eating? Look, your, your eyes were bigger than your stomach. You saw everything on your plate, so you decided to eat everything you had made yourself sick but you went by your eyes 
Even when it comes to God, you say, God, the reason is I, I, I can't see what you're talking about. I know you said go and launch out, but God, amen, I can't get to the other side. It's like Moses looked at the Red Sea. And what he saw was the Red Sea in front of him. And what he saw was what? Pharaoh's army behind him. But what he did not see was the God who, amen, was taking care of him. So he said, Moses, what you're trying to see is with your eyes, but with your spirit, man. He said, take what's in your hand, reach out towards heaven, and open up your mouth. That's why you got to realize that the worlds were framed by the words of God. You can't see words, but they work. How many people know you can't see my words, but they will get into your spirit. You can't see what God is always doing, but God is working it out for look at somebody say God is working it out for you you can't see it and that's why the enemy knows that's why he comes against your five senses that's why he comes against your eyes because God be telling you something but yet you say I can't see it God said I'm working something in you you said but I can't see it that's why he said your eyes have not seen uh, and your ears amen people find it difficult to believe anything they cannot see that's why faith is paramount. It is important. Amen. When you look at ears, he said, listen, I ain't heard it. Amen. No one told me. Have you ever said, no one told me about it. I, I don't know anything. About it. I haven't heard it. Amen. We listen to our audible senses. Amen. To see where we're going. I'm waiting. Many of you are waiting to audibly hear a word from God. But God said, even still, he said, in hearing, you don't hear. You're waiting to hear from God, but you're waiting to hear him. Get this. In a voice that you want to hear him from. In other words, I'm not listening to you, Pastor. Pastor, I, I'm waiting for a word from the Lord. Amen. Pastor, I, I, I don't receive what you said. God's got another plan. Well, saints of God, you got to learn how to hear with your spiritual ear and know that God set up so God, Sunday mornings for, amen, me to be inspired by his word, much like he inspired the writers of the Bible to give you what thus saith the Lord. This is God's plan for you. Look at somebody say, this is God's plan. I know many of you say, well, I can hear from the Lord myself. You can and you should, but you cannot hear from the Lord. Hear this. You cannot hear from the Lord if you ignore the prophet that God sent. You can't hear from the Lord if you don't read the word of God. Don't tell me God told me this. And I'm going to say, how much time you been in your word? Amen. Amen. Is what God told you according to what the word of God says? If it is not, so I'm not saying nothing. Talk to you. I'm not saying nothing didn't speak to you. How many people know you got to be careful what spirit is speaking to you? I've heard people say something that God said, and I said, it absolutely sounds nothing like God. Yes, God. Amen. You say, how do you know, preacher? Because you got to know God. See, when you know God's word, it will insulate you from the false prophets in your life. When you got people come and tell you what God said, and God told me to tell you this, and God told me to tell you that. See, when people come to me with that nonsense, amen, if what God says does not line up with the word of God, and what God has been teaching us here at Rockstone as we rightly divide the word, if God is, amen, amen if any way God is contradicting himself, we know God is not the author of confusion, so somebody's got to be a liar. And I'm so glad the Bible says, amen, God is not a man that he was. That he should lie. So if there's a lie told, God, look at somebody and say, God didn't tell it. <laughs> God didn't tell it. He said, your ears haven't heard. He said, neither has it entered into the heart of men. When we deal with the heart, it is a translation from cardia. Amen. The people in biblical times, amen, the Old and New Testaments thought of the heart as the center of the intellect and the will rather than just your emotions so when we say the heart we're not talking about just how you feel many of us got to understand that we got to watch how we feel look at somebody say watch how you feel Many of us make bad decisions when we in our feelings. Amen. That's the terminology they use now, right? In our feelings. You got to be careful. How many of y'all have made catastrophic mistakes when you was in your feelings? Somebody hurt your feelings, so you got back at them. Amen. Somebody did something you didn't like, so you're going to do something. You better learn how to wait, hold it for a second. Amen. Be slow to act because while you're in your feelings, amen, that's why you with them now because you was in your feelings. Uh, that, that's why you don't have that house now because you was in your feelings. I wish I had a help. Hey, I must be talking right today because y'all looking for like who told him to talk to me it got to see, see God I didn't know I was going to get in your business I apologize I apologize but, but God is speaking he said the reason you where you are now because you did it in your feelings God said I don't operate just by your feelings amen I operate by my word I operate by obedience he said even if you don't feel it if I said it it shall be done even if you don't feel it if I told you to do it you got to go beyond your feelings you know why because your feelings will change 
I, I said you'll feel, how many of y'all have different feelings every day? Today you like them and tomorrow you don't. Uh, today you're up and tomorrow you're down. You can't operate in your feelings, but you got to say, Lord, I operate in your word. Somebody say hallelujah. He said, amen, neither has it entered the heart of men, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. In other words, he said, it is impossible for you to what? To imagine it. It's what he's saying. It's impossible for you to grasp onto it. It's impossible for you to get your senses around it. That's what Paul was saying. He said, the mysteries of God and the change that you're looking for. I'm telling you somebody, the change that we're all looking for, it is impossible to grasp it with our own mindset. It's impossible to grasp it because of what you do. That's why your three-step plan does not work, but you got to go to God. you got to change your mind because what you're trying to get to, you can't get to on your physical faculties. You can't get there on your intellect, but you got to get there through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he said the things that God has prepared for them that love him, you haven't even been able to see it. You haven't even been able to hear it. You have not, it has not entered into your heart, which means you're imagination which means your thought process which means your intellect you have it that's why he said amen amen he said what he said i'm able to do what exceeding and abundantly above all somebody say all all that you can ask or think according to the what power that works in you god said amen i'm able to do more than what you think according to that power that works in you saints of god you've got to have the power of god working in you your mindset cannot be physical and you get to where god wants he said you haven't seen you haven't heard it hasn't entered your mind you can't grasp what i'm getting ready to do on your own mindset you've got to have the spirit of god amen for those things that god has prepared for them that love him how do i know because Paul says in verse number 10, but God has revealed them. Uh, in other words, he just said, amen. We like to say that scripture, but we forget the next verse. He said, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, hasn't entered the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for them that love him. That means you haven't been able to grasp it, but somebody can get an idea or a glimpse. How do you know? He said, but, somebody say, but God. But God has revealed them to us. Through his, he's revealed what? He's revealed the things that he's going to do. He's revealed the things that he has for us. He's revealed the promises that he has. He's revealed how he's going to bring us out. He's revealed how he's going to save us. He's revealed how he's going to amen, open up doors. He's revealed how he's going to deliver us. He's revealed those things that he's got prepared for us through his spirit. Ah, saints of God, the just shall live by faith. Uh, you got to walk after the spirit of God because if you don't walk by the spirit you will fall by your flesh for it is the spirit that searches all things yes the deep things of god for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man which is in him hallelujah even so no one knows the things of god except the spirit of god saints of god amen i want you to know something we try to get a hold of the mysteries of god and the blessings of god and the promises of god and yet we try to see what god is doing we try to conceptualize god we try to, amen, understand God. We try to see how God works with science. But can I be honest with you? You cannot understand God through your fleshly means. That's why you can come to church and if you just sit there and physically say, well, pastor, I don't get it, you never will. If you sit there and try to put two and two together, you don't know how God operates, but you got to get it in your spirit. Remember, God is a what? spirit and he that worship him must do so in what spirit and in truth you if you're going to get god you better open up your spirit man if you're going to see god you got to see him with your spirit hallelujah he said amen amen you can in other words amen i see the olympics right amen i'm watching people playing all kind of athletics i'm watching people amen amen go through water polo i'm watching these individuals amen diving i'm watching these individuals amen i think the other day tennis was on amen i'm watching them and because I'm watching them, please don't think I can understand what it takes for them to get there. I don't understand the sacrifices that they had to make. In other words, because I'm able to see it, because I'm around it, does not mean I understand it. Saints of God, Paul is trying to tell us here that, amen, only the spirit of a man can tell what's on the man's mind. And God said, if you're going to see what I got in mind, if you want to see what I have for your future, if you want to see what I have for your life, you can't do it by your carnal mind because your carnal mind will be in the amen the laboratory trying to figure God out but you can't figure God out in a test tube oh you can't figure out a miracle by medical science 
Yeah, there's some things that God does you'll never get, never understand, don't know how he did it. Amen. How many of you are sitting right here still don't know how you got out of the accident? Still know, don't know how he's still healing your body? Still don't know how? Most of all, he saved a sinner like you. But look at the power of God when the word of God comes. So God is saying, amen, you cannot receive the things of the spirit uh, except you be in the spirit. He said, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Uh, now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit who is from God that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God I say saints of God God said freely give I'm going to give it to you free I'm not going to make you pay for it because you couldn't pay for it I'm not going to make you earn it because you couldn't earn it I'm not going to make it available to the highest bidder because if I did that you wouldn't be able to afford it but God said I'm going to give it to those amen freely I'm going to give it to you freely I'm going to open up my spirit and I'm going to give it to you but you got to do what you got to take it by the spirit you can't take it by your mind that's where many people mess up is they try to understand it with their own calculations you try to make God what you want God to be in your mind but you got to lose your mind and take on the mind of God uh, he said amen I'm going to give it to you he said guess what he said now you receive that's why the Holy Ghost comes huh? and the spirit of the Lord comes not just for you to jump and shout which is all right amen it's good for you to jump right it's good for you to be exuberant but the Holy Ghost can I be honest doesn't come for you just to feel good it doesn't come for you just to jump and shout the Holy Ghost comes so that you can understand the Spirit of God why because God said I've got a plan for you he said even when you pray huh, he said you don't know what to pray for as you ought to so you got to pray in the Holy Ghost huh? the Holy Ghost will make utterings and groanings huh? it will pray according to the Word of God that's why you got to get out of your flesh you got to get out of yourself and you get out of what you want, out of what you feel, out of what you think, and you got to go and get to God. Uh, you wonder why things aren't happening. You're praying according to your will. You're praying according to your ways. You're praying according to what you want, but God said you got to pray according to the Spirit. Somebody say, you got to pray in the Spirit. Oh, I don't hear nobody. You say you got to pray in the Spirit. You got to pray knowing that God will operate and move in the Spirit. You can't get it in your flesh because your flesh is evil. Your flesh has to die and be taken away. But what God speaks to is your spirit. You got to say, Lord, here I am, Lord. Speak to my spirit. Show me which way to go. He said, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given. God said, I've got so much free. How many of y'all like free stuff? I can't hear nobody. Y'all looking crazy. I'm going to offer y'all some, offer some money right now for free. Amen. I have a line coming up here. Amen. Some of y'all, they know how to get y'all. They have those giveaways. They, you know why? Because people like stuff free. It could be something that you... How many of y'all got stuff you don't even need, but it was free? Y'all don't want to talk to me. I'm going to sit over here by the air real quick since y'all not going to talk to me. How many of y'all got junk in your house right now that you know good and well you can't even use, but it was free? Somebody was giving it away, so you took it. You got a whole bunch of junk at your house in the back of the garage, amen, in the closet. You say, why do I have this? I don't know. It was free. Can I tell you something? Since you're so excited about getting free stuff, you need to get some free stuff that you can actually use. You need to get some, oh, God, stuff from God. God said, I'll kill you, and it's free. I'll deliver you, and it's for free. I'll open up a door for you, and it'll be free. He said, I'll give you gifts, and it'll be for free. He said, I already paid for it. Anybody ever got something that somebody said, I already paid for? I've already paid the price. I'm going to give you two tickets. Well, Rockstone, I'm going to say, God, I'm going to give you your ticket. Your ticket to your freedom. Your ticket to your joy. Your ticket to your redemption. Your ticket to your salvation. He said, it's freely given to us by God. But the only way you can receive it, you got to do it by the Spirit. God said, I got all this stuff out there for you, but you won't receive it because you won't go in the spirit. You got to understand. If you don't get it in your mind, you won't do it. If you can't see it for yourself, you won't do it. But God said, when are you going to let go and let God? Let me ask somebody, when are you going to let go and let God? No, God, I don't see it. No, God, I don't hear it. No, God is not in my heart. No, God, I can't imagine it. But because you said it, I believe it. But because you spoke it, it will come to pass. God, because you said you're going to do it, and you're a man of your word, I'm going to stand right here like it's already done. I wish I had a sanctified person that'll stand up, say it's already.
already done. If the Lord has said it, it's already done. If he already spoke it, it's going to come to pass. How do you know? Because the Spirit told me. The Holy Ghost spoke on the inside. When I didn't agree, I went down on my knees. And I prayed in the Holy Ghost. And when I was saying no, the Holy Ghost, God, the Holy Ghost said, God is able. The Holy Ghost agreed with the Spirit of God because it is the Spirit of God. And when the Spirit of God in you, when it agrees with the Spirit of the living God, amen, they agree together. And whatever God says, it will come to pass. You're waiting on it, but you ought to stop just waiting and folding your arms. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. How do I wait? I wait by giving them glory. I wait by giving them honor. I wait by opening up my mouth and giving him the sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of your lips. As a matter of fact, I ain't heard nobody yet. So I'm going to praise him even through it. I'm going to praise him even though I don't see it. I'm going to praise him even though I can't earn it. Why? Because my spirit man tells me. That's why we sing a song that I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Sometimes when pastor's preaching, I'm not preaching based on what I know. Because I look at your situations. I look at your sicknesses. I look at my own situations. I look at where Rockstone Church is. And I say, Lord, I know we can do better. I know you can heal. I know you can open up a door. But sometimes as a man, I've got to be honest, I don't see it. Lord, I don't know. We are thousands of dollars away from where we need to be. But God, I'm learning that if you said it, you're going to bring it to pass. Ah, why? Because I gotta go beyond my flesh. I gotta leave Eric Kennedy alone. And I've got to go into the spirit that dwells inside of me. So Rockstone, when I'm preaching to you, please don't think, Pastor, it's getting in your business that I'm giving you just hope out of nothing. But this hope that I'm giving you is based on the spirit of God. So when I'm telling you it's going to be all right, it's not just me sounding good. I'm not just trying to build the church, but I'm trying to build God's kingdom with the truth of the gospel. The spirit man said, you got these things freely. It's time to receive what God, look at somebody, it's time to receive what God has for us. I said, it's time to receive what God has. Some of us are leaving things on the table. You got a healing. You all got somebody say, I'm going to receive it. Somebody lift your hands. Say, Lord, I receive everything you have for me. I'm not going to see it with my mind. I'm not going to see it with my eyes. I'm not going to see it with my hands. I'm not going to hear it with my ears. But in my spirit, because I've got the Holy Ghost. Anybody here got the Holy Ghost? That's that's why you need the Holy Ghost. It will tell you things are going to happen that you don't see or can't comprehend. People will look at you and laugh in your face and tell you it's not coming to pass. I'm at the end of all this. We'll finish it up next week. But I feel the Holy Ghost pushing me right here. People will look at you and say you're crazy. It ain't never coming to pass. You can believe that until you die. Well, guess what? I will. And I am. But the Holy Ghost I have, it does more than make me want to lift my hands. But when all hope is gone and people have ridden me off and the devil thought he had victory, I'm going to go by the spirit of the living God. Holy Ghost, speak to my heart. Holy Ghost, hear my cry. Holy Ghost, encourage me. Holy Ghost, teach me how to live. Holy Ghost, teach me how to love. Holy Ghost. You say, what do you mean? He said, I'm going to love you by the love that is shed in my heart by the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. For the Bible says in Acts 1 and 8, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. We're teaching a lot of politics. We're teaching a lot of self-help. We're teaching a lot of tithe and offering. And we're teaching a lot of lift your hands. And all these things are good. And they have their place. But if you're really going to make a change in somebody's life, if you're going to find healing when death is in front of you, if you're going to find power to overcome even your own self, you're going to have to dig way down. Dig deep and say, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, I need you. I feel like falling down. But Holy Ghost, help me. I remember when I was a boy. Amen. I would hear 
a gentleman say, help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. I come to talk to some Holy Ghost believers real quick. I know things are getting tough, and COVID is resurging, and we're heading back to school, and we're having church in the heat, and we don't know which way to go. Troubles on every side. It looks like we can't go up for going down. We got mountains to climb, or we're in the valley. Marriages are acting funny. Health is being suspect. Finances seem to be crazy. But I dare the Holy Ghost speakers, the Holy Ghost believers, the Holy Ghost saints, the simply say, help me, Holy Ghost, be there for me. Holy Ghost, walk with me. Holy Ghost, guide me. Holy Ghost, empower me. Holy Ghost, if you do it, I'll make it. If you do it, I'll stand. If you do it, I'll be healed. If you do it, I'll make it all the way. Somebody open up your mouth and shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Look, my time is gone. Listen, fundamental change. Change in your mind. It can't happen with wisdom of men. It must happen with God's spirit. If you're going to build the framework for fundamental change, you got to realize you can't change yourself. You can't just want it and say, I'm going to do it. You know how many people wanted to change but couldn't? I don't hear nobody. You know how many people wanted to change? Said, hey, I want to change so bad. I want to do it right. But every time we tried to do it right, we couldn't, could we? Because Paul said it like this. Within me, which is my flesh, dwelleth some good thing. Dwelleth a few good things. I, I, I know you different than everybody else, but for, for me, I heard the word says, dwelleth no good thing. That means even when I wanted to try, evil was there. When I wanted to stand, I fell. When I promised God I'll never do it again. I found myself doing it again. And I'm going to tell somebody right now, you need to start saying four words. Help me. Holy Ghost. I want to change, but I can't do it on my own. And God said, I know you can't do it on your own. That's why I'm giving you the Holy Ghost. And can I be honest with you? You say, well, Pastor, how much is it? Free? Freely, I'm going to give it to you. All you got to do is ask me for it. Seek it yourself. He said, I'll give it to you free. Why? Because I love you. And I know that you need help on this journey. I know that you can't make it by yourself. How do I know? Because, look, you've been trying. How's that worked out for you? How has it worked? How has doing it your way worked out for you? It hadn't worked. Why? Because the Bible says, without me, you can do nothing. I, I feel God in my spirit yes. right now. Yes. Because the fundamental transformation that we're looking for, it's got to go with your mind, but it's got to start with repentance. Yes, God. Yes. But you got to realize that change cannot happen without the Holy Ghost working in you. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes. It can't, because you can only go so far as a man. That's why men and women can go so far in education, but still can't understand God. Yes. You ever seen people that's the brightest people in the world, but they can't get God? Mama, mama, mama. People that are the smartest people, scientists, that can study the stars, look at the cosmos, know that they don't know how the earth began, but won't believe in God. Yes, God. Yes, God. They'll look at miracles and say, you know, because I can't see it. Some people will flat out look at a miracle in the face and say, I don't believe it because I can't understand it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, a miracle simply is God supernaturally intervening in the natural affairs of man. So you're not going to understand it because it doesn't make literal sense. Uh -huh. But how do people know we serve an extraordinary God? Y'all don't, don't hear me. We serve an extraordinary God who will do things that don't make sense. So we are building the framework for fundamental transformation. And I learned a long time ago, if you get the fundamentals, everything else, if you build the house right, it'll stand. If you build the house strong, yes. it'll stand the test of time. Yes, it will. The winds will come and the waves will come and people will come. Philosophies will come. Theories will come. 
People will come. Naysayers will come. Heretics will come. Unbelievers, agnostics, atheists will come. But you'll still change. You'll still repent. You'll still trust in God. Because you want to know why? Because it was built on the foundation. Now look, you may be here today. And we'll finish up the rest of it next week. Amen. Uh, unless the Lord moves another way, which he always can and does. But you're here today. And you know good and well you're ready for fundamental change. You need to stand up from wherever you are. You need to walk, come in the middle of this amen altar. The outside altar. Yeah. The heat altar. Yeah. Sunshine altar. Yes, God. Say, Lord, I'm ready for fundamental change. Now listen, this is not easy. Because most people, to be honest with you, are not ready for fundamental change. They'll change their cereal, but they won't change their mind. They'll change where they go to shop. See, when they mess up, here's the thing. When you mess up, you don't change your mind. You just change the place you go. So you won't mess up here no more. You just mess up there. You don't mess up with them. You'll mess up with her. And, it, and, and the beat keeps on going. But if you're out there and you're ready for fundamental change, I'm telling you, God is here to change you. His word is here to change you, but you cannot do it in your own intellect. Because guess what? You can't hear it. You can't see it. It has an entrance to your heart. He said, but God has revealed it to them that, that, that love and that follow after the spirit. Let me explain something. God is a spirit. And he will indwell you with his spirit on the inside. It will enliven and make those dry bones of yours live again. You need his spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. So how to receive it? So easy. You say, Lord, I want your spirit. Yes, God. I believe that you are God. Yes, God. I believe fundamentally, God, that you're able to save, yes. set free, and deliver. God, I want you in my life. I changed my attitude, my mind. But you know, I can't change overnight. But I changed my direction. Yes. Yes. So that as I grow, I grow in you and not out of you. Yes, I repent. I don't look at things my way, but I look at them your way now, God. I find some water. I get baptized. But guess what? The Lord can fill you with the Holy Spirit before you get to the water. Because if you change your mind and open up and say, Lord, I receive your spirit. I want your spirit. I need your spirit. Open up your heart. Open up your mind. He'll come on inside. And you'll know it because you're, amen, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. He said, this fake he of the spirit. So today, saints of God, if you don't, hallelujah, if you don't have him for yourself, you can receive the Spirit today because you need it. It's part of the framework for fundamental change. I can't talk about you changing and not talk about the Holy Spirit. If I did, I'd be another self-help guru that'll leave you hanging high and dry. And you'll pay all this money and still recognize I still got problems. How many of y'all go to all kind of therapists, all kind of psychiatrists? And those, they have their place. No, I'm not saying that. But at the end of the day, they give you what man can give you. After they give you the techniques and the one, two, three, you need something to help you to actually what? Do it. Yes, yes, God. See, my problem is not that we don't know what to do. We don't have the power to actually do it. I'm going to say it again. It's not that how many of y'all know what to do. Yeah, I know not to cheat. I know not to go and overeat. I know not to go and, and smoke this. I know not to go and get high. They don't say say no to drugs. I know that. I know I'm not supposed to go and shoot and kill and steal. I know that. But I don't have the power to do it. Or in this case, not to do it. I need some power. Fundamental change. You got to have the Spirit of God. If you don't have it, you're none of His. But if you have it, how to do you belong to Him. And eyes haven't seen. Ears haven't heard. Has an entrance to the hearts of men with the, the things that our God has prepared for them that love Him. Anybody here love the Lord, lift your hands real quick. If you love the Lord, lift your hands. If you want to be a part of God's kingdom, email us. Say, Pastor, I want to be baptized. I, I repented of my sins. I believe Jesus, Lord. I want to give him my life. You can do so right now. Email us, rockstonechurch at outlook.com. We got a Zoom prayer room going. Get on Zoom prayer and say, Pastor, I, I, you know, whoever's, whoever's going to pick up, say, I, I want to receive Christ. Come on, pray with me. Set me up a time to get baptized physically or virtually. We do both. Because the only thing that really matters is your faith, some water, 
and Jesus being there. That's what matters. And that will always be. If you're here, come on, let us know. Tell us about it. Don't hide. Come on. If there's one, let us know. Again, Rockstone Church and Outlook.com. The Zoom information should be on your screen. Amen. It should be there. Link for you to link up. Go to Zoom. Get some prayer. People waiting on you. God is waiting on you. Saying, if you want it, I've got it. Nobody can stay your hand. God, freedom right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody lift your hands. Father God, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this word, for this congregation, both in person and virtually. I thank you for change, fundamental, and transformation. I thank you, God, for what you said and how you said it. Enemy doesn't want us to hear this, but God, you send it anyway. In the midst of everything we're going through, you're still sending truth. You're still sending your word. You're still sending hope and help. You're still sending us what we need. For you will not leave us, even in the middle of COVID, a pandemic, even in the middle of legislative unrighteousness, in the middle of, of a change in environment, even in the middle of a battle, a, a tassel, a, a fight. You're there. And you're still teaching us, leading us, and guiding us. So Lord, thy word is truth. So we hear your word, God. Send your word. Hear your people. And God, somebody, even though hallelujah, they didn't come, they're looking for fundamental change. You gave them the word today. Let them hear it. Put it in their heart. Say, Lord, I know you're able to help me. And they figured out, if I'm going to build my hope on things eternal, if I'm going to change my mind, then as I change my mind, what's going to help me go in the right direction? The Spirit of God. Because we can't grasp it without a spirit. But once we have a spirit and we can see it, He's got things He freely gives us. God, we thank you for your free gifts. And we don't leave them on the table. We receive them right now. I receive your joy. I receive your peace. I receive your healing. I receive your salvation. I receive your loving kindness. I receive your grace. I receive your mercy. And Lord, I receive your favor. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say, Amen. Now open up your mouth, everybody, real quick. And let's give God one more praise. One more praise. Honk those horns. Lift up your voices. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Thank you for being here. We love you. See you next time. Peace be unto you. Peace be multiplied. Have a great week.